Okay, welcome to our first episode of All Things Football. Uh, I'm Lee Allinson. I'm joined by co-host Jay Drackford. How are you, Jay? All right, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Lee. Good, good, good. Um, also, just recording for us, Billy Allinson. He's going to be doing our producing as well after after this episode. So, thanks for that, Bills. With our first, see Jay, do you want to introduce him? Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, gosh. There's no bigger name, really, is there? I can't believe we're doing this. It's absolutely there's brilliant. No, there's no I've bigger had the head. of... Uh, of uh, interview, uh, interviewing Darren So a couple of times, but I've always wanted to do a solid hour with him. And uh, so we've got Yeovil, current Yeovil manager, Darren So with us on the, on the line this afternoon. Good afternoon, Darren. Hello, chaps. How are we all? Very well, mate. Thank you, yourself. I thought Jay was going to be really, really rude there and say, they don't come as big as they come. Have you seen how much weight he's put on since he left <laughs> England? <laughs> I bet you put some timber on as well, haven't you? With no football at the moment. No, no, no. I'm doing well. 30k a week on the road. Last three weeks. What That's riding? No, running, you clown. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What are you, are you doing without me? no Jimmy Martin to punch down there, though, Darren? Yeah, it's, I've got to be honest. It has it has become really, really hard because obviously I took him to Watford with me as well. So I was able to punch him there in front of some millionaires, and that was even <laughs> that, that was even better. But down here, Terry Skiverton, who's Kind of, where he's my assistant, amongst other things. But he, um, he, uh, he, Terry likes a box, but he doesn't want to spar with me yet. And um, <laughs> I'm not surprised. I've seen him no, in action. Yeah, he's no. The Terry can. Terry's useful. So I'm a little bit. I don't think he wants to work me. Actually, he tells a bit Andy. So I think he's a little bit worried about now. Him. I think he's a little bit worried about what I might, uh, I might use it as gross misconduct or something <laughs> to kick me. So. <laughs> He's uh, he's seen he's seen me hire and fire. I don't think he's too uh, too. Do you go full pelt with him as well, Dad? When you go, <clears throat> yeah, with with me and, with me and Jimmy, it starts it starts very good natured, straight punches only, jabs, straight right hands, <laughs> and before you know it, I've hit him or he's hit me, and and we're we're swinging for. And there was a there was a there was a morning funny story. This it was a morning when uh, I used to do it at Stevenage every morning before the players got in, especially. Um, probably probably the first year I was permanently manager. I used to do it a lot in the morning, and um, I remember we'd started late this one day, and the players were in at nine, and we were still boxing at let's say half eight, twenty-five to twenty-five to nine, and there was about eight heads looking through this window of a door. You know the really <laughs> slim windows on the middle of the door. Yeah, there was about eight heads, and at the top of it was Ronnie em- half of Ronnie Emery's face and half of Jack King's face, half of a smile each. And me and Jimmy Martin were, you know, we were, it, it must have been one of them days where we were trying to really hurt each other. So, um, but they were all laughing, giggling. They must have thought, oh my life, what are we, what are we working for here? <laughs> Superb. <laughs> Superb. So, Darren, what we want to do is go a bit of a, this is your life really with you uh, over the next hour if possible, mate. So, um, let's, let's talk, uh, jump straight into uh, Junior Darren. Who did you play football for when you was a kid? And I was, um, did you fall in love? Well, my dad was a, a really, really good non-league player. So he was a non-league, uh, like England. They used to call it the FA 11 back then. Um, but he was a goalkeeper and a local goalkeeper. But when sort of Baldock Town were very prominent, Letchworth, Stockfold, all of the Hitchens, all of these teams were really prominent teams in non-league. Some of them obviously still are. Um, and he was, a, he was a player. So I used to be, this would never happen these days, which is a shame. But I'm, Lee, I'm sure you were the same. But I used to, I used to watch him play. I'd be five or six, and I'd have the free roam of the football club until he yeah. finished playing, and he'd come off, and I'd be in the dressing room with you know, older players at you know a really young age. So yeah, I never really had a choice. Um, I didn't really want a choice. Football was kind of just the be all and end all for me. And you know, when I look at the entertainment that young people have today, it, I didn't need any other entertainment than a football or a pair of gloves or, you know, or a tennis ball or something like that. So I had an end of terrace house and I just used to smash footballs against it until ornaments used to fall off that, you know, the mm. side of the living room. You know, it was just, just the way it was, wasn't it? Yeah, no, mate, I, I remember them days. And like you say, I think you, you grow up very quickly and then change rooms as well, Darren, don't you? You know, it's all you know, it's all you do. And, and like you say, you fall in love very, very early with it because I remember just being in change rooms from day one with dad. And, and like yeah. you say, you get the Rome and a football pitch and Saturday yeah. of the day, you was out playing all day and then you play for your team on a Sunday. It was what it was all Absolutely. about. Absolutely. 
yeah. And 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 I, you know, and I was lucky in that way that my dad was my dad was a coach. But I, I can remember I was five when I used to be a sub for an under nineteen. I mean, I mean, nick, nickname because I was a bit short and stocky, as I'm sure you can imagine. And uh, <clears throat> my nickname was Muscles, and um, <laughs> and, my, and it was my brother's team, and he was playing in that team, and um, and and they used to let me go on five or ten minutes, you know, every fortnight or month or something like that. And I just used to, I went in goal once, and I went, I played. I can still remember it now. And um, so I was always, you know, like a lot of footballers back then when it was the, the, the standard thing to do. From five years old, we were playing games on full-size pitches. Five-year-old yeah. on a full-size pitch. Wow. I mean, you'd be called a loon now if... Uh, but, yeah, you, you know, yeah. it, it, uh, it, was, it, it was brilliant. And then eventually, uh, my dad was at the coach of uh, Letchworth Garden City Eagles, which is a lovely, lovely football club for, for, yeah. for juniors. Yeah. And... Um, and I spent a long time there, among, whilst kind of dip, uh, tiptoeing in and out of clubs. I had three years at Watford, where I would train, play in the half, play in the holidays. I was never quite in the camp. Um, and then I came out of there, and still at Letchworth, and um, and then I went to Ipswich, and I had a couple of years at Ipswich, and then I played for a wonderful local team between fourteen and sixteen that Lee probably can remember, and it was it was Ickleford. And yeah. um, we yeah. had an we had an under fifteen and an under sixteen team, and we were we were we were very very good. I mean, all the yeah. Donnellys who uh, yeah. had good non league careers, Stuart Lockhead, good non league career. Yeah. I mean, we had massive characters. I mean, blimey, growing up in those changing rooms, you were a twenty five year old when you were fifteen with some of the things yeah, you are, that yeah. used yeah. to go on in the changing room, especially with those types of those types of characters. So, I loved I loved my junior football time and. I liked being in and out of clubs. I had a week at Arsenal. Um, I never touched it for a week. Steve Sidwell and Ryan Ricketts never let me get a touch for, for a week. <laughs> I was nowhere near, nowhere near the standard. Um, and uh, I, I enjoyed Ipswich. A, a guy called Colin Suggett was the academy manager at the time. And Colin Suggett was the one who brought through Gaza at Newcastle. I very mm -hmm. much liked him. He had a lot of character. Um, and, and, and yeah, and I ended up playing all, all around the world in tournaments and I really did. I really did enjoy it. I really did enjoy just, it. Just just touching on that, Daz. In terms of when you was at the the pro clubs and the academies, do you think that now there's there's a little bit too much pressure on on younger players? You know, like back in our day when we would play, you know, like you said, you touch on it. You'd, you'd go in there for a couple of weeks. You'd play a game in the holidays. You'd still be able to play for your Sunday team. Yeah. And there's a little less pressure on it. You look at players yeah. now at 10, 11, parents, the pressure that's put on them to fight for a contract. And, yeah. and we all know, you know, you don't come to good until you're 17, 18, 19. Some yeah. players it's up a little bit older now, you know. So yeah. do you think there's a little bit too much pressure? And this well, is I, all I, like should I, have been? I remember the best standard of games I used to play in was the old district and county games. They were excellent games. I Super, mean, really, yeah. really yeah. strong standard. And I mean, I don't know if you remember, Lee, but when I was academy manager at Stevenage, I always encourage the, the young ones to play right. for their school. Yeah. Um, go and score 10 goals for your school against another school. And, you know, yeah. playing games where the bars, you can't see the white of the crossbar because there's tape all around it hanging off. And go and yeah. play on bad pitches. And, you know, I was always into that. But the district and county games were really excellent. I mean, I used to really enjoy those because it was it was probably the last part of the generation of, all the top players, even at the best clubs, Watford's, Arsenal's, da 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 da, you'd all play, and you'd go and play the London teams, and you know Hearts playing a team from you know the Bermondsey area or something like that. It yeah. was they were proper games. Yeah, they were. They were proper games, and you and you and you and you worked out what you were. Very, I worked out what I was as a player very young, based on based on those games because if you didn't work it out, you didn't you didn't survive. So I thought. I think I think there was still I still think there was still pressure. I remember still feeling pressure. I remember still I remember the way people used to handle things. We were a lot more direct and a lot more um, yep. harsh than they are now. Mm. Um, because honestly, now he's seen as bullying. <laughs> Massively, yeah. It, so so yeah. You, you can't you can't be. I mean, you know, I, I speak to a thousands of academy coaches, hundreds, thousands of academy coaches, and. They, they, I talk about feedback and how important feedback is, and, and I said, well, "Tell them the truth." No, we can't. That, they, they genuinely believe they can't tell these players and their parents the truth now. So, 
it's uh, the world has changed. The world has changed. I mean, if I if when I got released from clubs or I didn't make the county team one year and they literally read out the team in the dressing room and if your name wasn't on that list, you had to get your stuff and go out in front of everyone. Yeah, I mean, we're walking out, crying my eyes out, and we go, what are you crying for? So, well, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've not got in. Well, maybe you should have thought about keeping the ball a bit better then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, dead, dead straight. All right, let's move on. Come on. What's next? Yeah. So, I think... <laughs> I think, you know, you're, you're what the worst part, Lee, and, and Jay was, was, was always the worst part of you football was always getting in the car on the way home and, and waiting for the verdict. <laughs> and always. Did, did you, you know, so we were getting feedback like straight away, straight after the game. And, and when, when we talk about it being honest, it was, uh, you know, uh, I can only tell you about my dad, but it was brutal honesty, you know, too but, slow, didn't do this, didn't do that, didn't win enough headers. Rubbish, cowardly. The thing is, Powell, like, you, you know as well as I do as well. It, it, that that kind, like you say earlier, you know yourself. Then with that brutal honesty at times, you knew yourself yeah. in the game. If it weren't going well, you know you're not playing well enough. You know yes. nowadays, you know, people sugarcoat things and 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 make out that it's all <coughs> right and it's not too bad and it's not really realistic, is it? You know what I mean? Back in our day, we knew if we weren't playing well, we knew what was coming when we was getting the uh, car. Uh, no, absolutely. But that isn't that. Isn't that building? I mean, for me, that's how you build resilience. So you know, my, my dad never give me a whack around the back of the back of the head because I played bad. He just he just told me the truth. Exactly. And yeah. and every time I got told the truth and I carried on and I went out the next day and played or I went out that night and played or that's how you add layers in your resilience. And and the problem and the problem now is and I've said this all the way through, especially the the Watford thing and 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 now. At Yeovil, um, the, the the problem is now you can people you you are not allowed to develop a character in a player the right way, mm -hmm. and the world is getting harsher. Yeah, I mean, have you seen what people say to each other now on social media? It is disgusting. Disgraceful, yeah. Totally Absolutely agree. disgusting. But because they've sat behind the computer or they've sat on a phone or uh, uh, you know a tablet, you know that. That, that's all right because that's what the forum's about. It's about opinions, and that's my opinion. <laughs> Blind, yeah. say that face to face or something, you get locked up. <laughs> yeah, you would. You so would. It, you know, it, it, it's a it's a very very uh, you know. Look, anyone who works with young players, I know you still do, Lee. I love still working with the young ones, uh, the, the, especially the foundation phase, which I think you'll be surprised with, uh, Lee in particular, and Jay, to be fair. I think you'd be very surprised. I prefer working with the nines, yeah. tens, and elevens at Yeovil than any other group. Um, but I think it's the hardest job. Yeah, I mean, I coach, I coach it uh, under nines, and it's uh, <clears throat> it's so difficult. And it is, you, it's that, it's that line, isn't it, to cross of of what you can and what you can't say, which is really, really difficult because you get lads coming off that actually need to be told. I, I coach my lad, um, and I find it the hardest thing ever getting back in that car, like you touched on earlier on, and after the game, and telling him exactly how he did play and how he didn't play, yeah. and uh, it can be brutal. But um, yeah, you're right. Um, not being able to speak your own word as a coach can be difficult at times, can't it? <clears throat> yeah, I th I, look, I think I think you know every, every. I think you apply, especially you, Jay, because you've got a lovely you've got a lovely manner um, and, and way about you and an energy about you. So, it, you know, it would. I think it would probably come more natural. I love working with the nines and the tens and the elevens at Yeovil, I, and I never used to do it at all at, at Steve Nidge. I, I never used. It wasn't my job really at Watford. But if I could, if, when I can go and work with the nines, tens, and elevens at Yeovil, I absolutely love it. it. Takes you all the way back. You can you strip everything um, in terms of you know your coaching information and um, and uh, and the bits you do, um, and and it's pure coaching. And it's just how can I keep these boys loving the game as much as possible? I still tell them the truth if they don't work hard enough. If they yeah. sulk, I still tell them that they can't sulk. You, you, you still got to develop a, a character and a behaviour in in young people. Otherwise, you know, you if they if they want to climb this ladder, I know they're nine, but if they want to climb this ladder, it, it's no surprise with the ones who do that have that basis of a real strong character behind them. Yeah, no, I, t I totally agree. I totally agree. I, I think I remember when I was working at Stevenage with yourself and. <clears throat> You was you used to say just go and laugh and, and play with them and let them play with a freedom and don't tell them too much and you know I took that a long way actually because I think you see now a lot of coaches are so into in depth with seven eight nine ten eleven year olds that 
yeah. actually it's quite a simple game and you can make it really simple for them by just a few little words and a little bit of instru instruction and a little smile on your face can still <coughs> get into yeah. someone's head what they are or what they're not doing kind of thing. A ab a absolutely. I mean, I remember when you and you and Cam came to, to Steve Midge and um, the, be the best thing about um, you and Cam at the time, especially when I uh, had come in because, of, you know, like most jobs that I get, I, it's all about radical change. Yeah. Um, and um, and there was a real energy and intensity to your work. But what is what is when we talk about the intensity of, of coaching sessions? It's only repetition. It's only it's only allowing them to repeat what you're asking them to do more than not. Yeah. That's, that's all it is. But what we do now, and this is where we, we, I think we're hypocrites as coaches. And uh, I did a coach education evening. Um, at the end of January for the Somerset FA and there was a lot of coaches there and they looked at me like I was an alien at one point because I said, who does session plans? And I had 60 coaches in the room, right? And one of them is a world-class coach educator. So I was my, you know, I've got to be honest, I had to change my underwear a couple of times because I was a bit, <laughs> I was a bit nervous. He's, he, he, he's not bad. So, um, so yeah, you know, not, not likely, not like me to be nervous, but when I saw him in the room, I thought, well, maybe I should have prepared this a little bit more thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyway, and uh, I said, who does this session plan with the hands go up? I said, why? To be organised. Right, okay. Who wants to be organised? Well, I do as a coach. Well, I thought it was about the players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and they look at me as if to go, yeah, but I want to be organised. No, I know, I know that. I, listen, I completely get it. And I've done all of these things. This is only my opinion. But if we're really here for the players, You'll start the, the practice or the, the play or the session with what you want to kind of touch upon or what you want to focus on. But the players will take it the rest of the way by what they can or can't do. Yeah. If you've got a set plan for what they can and can't do, but well, that's about you, my friend. That's, that's not about the kids. Yeah. So, you know, we, uh, you know, Robbie O'Keefe was always very good at it. He's obviously still at Steve. He's now as the academy manager and Robbie still to this day, is, is one of the best coaches I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, but he's very good at going in with an idea and then the game, the players and the game, allowing it to develop. And he's very good at thinking on his feet and taking it to the next stage. Um, <clears throat> and I actually, that's, that's the only way I coach now, even with the first team at Yeovil. Yeah, no, that's brilliant, mate. No, I mean, just touching on now, just obviously when you were... <laughs> So you, you finished at Ickleford, did you at 16, and then what, go into senior football from there, or was it yeah, a, well, I, a process? Yeah, I, I, had a, I had a joint, joint support of uh, decision at 16. I had one from Ipswich that said you won't be good enough for an apprenticeship, yeah. which was, you know, more than fair, because the, the, there was a, they brought a boy in from the North East, and he was, oh, my life, I'm still chasing him now. Really? <laughs> he was very good. And, um, and so uh, I, uh, I, was, I was quite good at school. And um, I was I was going to study English at A level. Um, don't laugh now. Drama at A level. <laughs> don't laugh. Uh, and uh, PE at A level. And um, so I was going to do three A levels. And um, and then about two weeks really before I had to kind of sign on the dotted line, uh, I found out about a, a non-league uh, academy. Uh, they're, they're rife now. Obviously, we did one at Marriott's with UJ uh, yeah, that, yeah. that Lee now runs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was part of kind of the first wave of those schemes. Um, and that's when I met Robbie for the first time. Um, yeah. And Robbie was the coach. And all of a sudden, I, I could I would say within three or four weeks of being on that program and working with Robbie, I wanted to be a coach more than I wanted to be a footballer. Really. So. Yeah. You know, it was um, it was it was really defining. And I'd coached and I'd coached a lot by sixteen, really for for someone of that age. But <clears throat> excuse me, um, I um, within three or four weeks, I, I wanted to be a I wanted to be a, a coach educator. I wanted to coach players, and I wanted to do it more than be a player. Mm. Yeah, and then what? So you went there sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, did you? And then yeah, that, to... and that was yeah, and that was that was for Hitchin. That was for Hitchin Town. So Hitchin. Okay. And, and I was again, I was lucky because that was the old Ryman Premier days, which is now obviously the Conference South. Wrong. And um, and yeah. uh, and I was with the first team after about sort of six, seven weeks. Okay. <clears throat> and, and again, I'm in that kind of adult dressing room at 
you know, a very, very young age, big personalities, Adam yeah. Parker, Mark Burks, you know, yeah. obviously run niching now and you know, massive, massive Matty Nolan who ended up having a decent career and yeah, very good. Players like that. So Yeah, and what, what was how old was you when you made your debut there, Darren? What uh, hitching? Uh, hitching. Sixteen. Older shot away on Bank Holiday Monday. Wow. That, that's that's unbelievable. And what was you? Did you start that game or? Yeah, I played. Are you ready for it, Lee? Go on. Have you got your tissues ready? <laughs> right <on>. wing back. <laughs> wow. Now we all know in the modern <laughs> psyche and physiology of the game, Mr. Star has not got the composition to play in a right wing back role. <laughs> so what was you more of a right back? Was you? <clears throat> no, I uh, I lasted 60 minutes. I was useless. I played really poorly. I made the goal um, yeah. and I walloped into the left back, which was kind of my my thing, really. Walloping, uh, you know, flying into people. And I remember the barrage of abuse from the, the, the stand opposite the dugout at all the shot. Yeah. And, um, and, and I thought to myself, oh, my life, why are these people talking to me like that? <laughs> I was getting called... <laughs> <laughs> I was getting called things that I was getting called when I managed Stevenage, Jay. It was not very nice. <laughs> I never said any of those things. No, no, no. <laughs> not, not when your hair wasn't in front of your face, you didn't, no. <laughs> where did that take you down from Hitchin? Then where did you go so from the, there? Yeah, so a couple of years. I took two years there. I did a couple of loans and things like that. And I played for people like Kerry Dixon. That was good fun. Yeah. Um, at Dunstable, they had some big personalities there. Um, and uh, and then I went to, I had a couple of months at um, Berkhampstead and they were in the league below, so they might have been the Ryman one, let's say. <clears throat> and, then I, and, then, uh, and then I went and played a game for Bedford in the same league as Itchin. And they had a new manager called Kevin Wilson, who used to play for Chelsea and yeah. Northampton, he used to manage Northampton as well. And um, I played in the reserve game and, I, and then I signed there and I played the rest of the season there, so probably about half a season there and um, and then the whole of the following one from that. And then Steve Castle bought me to play at St Albans and uh, and that was really kind of the end after that. But the Bedford time, I, 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 I that was the, my most enjoyable period. And, um, you know, like we talk about players, Graham Tomlinson played there, ex-Man United, yeah, I remember Steve well. Howie. Steve Howie played centre half, ex Sunderland Premier League. I mean, yeah. it was a bit of a Liam Folds, Aston Villa, Carl Williams, the, the local lad from from yeah. Letcher, you, you know, that, that was a, there were some good non-league players. And um, at the good end of the year, I got, sorry, it was a good side that was very yeah, good. Yeah, it side. was. And we were we were. You might have been at Boreham Wood at the time. I wouldn't have wanted to play against you because all you used to do was kick people. So. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but that, you did you was you at Boreham when Park, Adam Parker went on loan there? No, from all no. the shot. No, it was Harlow at the time. <clears throat> so, uh, so we, I remember going to Boreham Wood and playing there. Obviously, the pitch has always has always been very good. So you always used to like going to Boreham Wood. But it was um, no, it was a really good team, and it was a hard team. I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't say I get scared easily, but Steve Howie used to scare me. Yeah. I mean, he he. Lee Howie's brother, who obviously played for Newcastle, uh, yeah. he was a big man, and I, I've never seen power and ability. I mean, he was a—he would have been a, a, a caveman in the Premier League terms with the way he played. But my, you, you forget how good these people are. Yeah. I mean, he had the best oh, touch man. and best passing range in our team, and he was the—he was the monster. Yeah. Um, and um, but he was my life. I mean, because I used to put myself into a few. Difficult situation, so we say. I remember him. I remember him. Do you remember the centre half? Was it Brown, the big scary centre half? Del Lee, Brown. Him? Who? Del Brown. Right, and he used to he used to like he eat just, glass and things yeah, like that. Mine, yeah, take his front teeth out and then put a gun <laughs> shield in. So I remember. <laughs> I remember we played St Albans one day, and he, he came up to me at half time. He said, "You keep kicking whoever was in midfield." <clears throat> I'll see you afterwards. I remember Lee Howie just stepping in front of me and he went, gone in. Let's go now. <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh my life, what is he doing? And and I just remember two massive men, like real men. Not yeah. not little boys. No, no, men, they're, they're men. Yeah. They're men. Men. And I remember yeah. them I just remember thinking, I'm I'm gonna slide myself into the dressing room pretty sharply. Yeah. 
I played with Brownie at, um, at Olsey and I remember going in at the end of the game. We'd won one nil and had a bit of a falling out with Chris Dillon at the time. And he was encouraging <laughs> That's us. Easy. That's easily done, though. <laughs> he was like, encouraging us to have a fight. And I was like, what? He's like, no, just fight. Go on to Perrier. Just have a fight now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You little <laughs> thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they were, I mean, you know, Lee was another, you know, he, he left a real lasting in impact and impression on me just never get never never really had to say it I'll do this I'll do that it was just when you when you when you needed it he'd stick yeah. himself in the way in front and go come on go on in you want to go through him yeah. you, you're gonna have to find a way through me first and I remember thinking yeah. if someone's gonna do it good luck to him but it certainly ain't gonna be me <laughs> <laughs> so, before before we move into your, your coaching badges and how you started picking those up, just a, just a quick one, uh, Darren. Um, influences manager wise, who, who you played for. I'm I'm a massive believer that um, you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I would have, I, I pick little things off different people of what I like and how I try and coach nowadays. I've seen you coach yeah. a few times. So your managers that, that you played for, what influences have you got from them? Well, well, Robbie was a huge influence um, as a coach, a huge influence. And it took me a long while to actually have my own sort of style uh, and not try and be, you know, I was, I was literally Robbie's second or shadow for a long, long time in, in my coaching yeah. style and mannerisms and things like that. And it took me a long time to, to, for me to have my own way and be happy with my own way. Um, so Robbie is a, you know, in terms of coaching was a huge influence, but Kevin, Kevin Wilson was, was, was very good. I played for Luther Blissett, who was uh, as good a man as I played for, um, and gave me a lot of responsibility at a, a young age, even though I kind of wasn't really kind of into playing then he, he still made, he, he was still a good man manager. Um, and, and all those ex players really, Kevin Wilson was a very good coach, a very tenacious manager always hard on me that was the best way to kind of spike me if you like I was always one of them if you got into me I would I would I would always react I would always respond um I never went into the corner I mean there's I was I was very poor as a player very average but <clears throat> um one thing I never did was hide especially after a you know a, a telling off shall we say um, and as, as manager, I, don't, I don't. I don't think. I don't think they influenced my 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 managerial style. I think my managerial style was influenced once I was in the game at a professional level, full time. That that heavily influenced me. And talking about uh, yourself, about needing a rocket off people as a manager now. How do you how do you pick out what players need? I know, for example, when I played, I didn't play to the level that yourself or, or Lee played at. I was that player that needed it, but no one ever picked up that I had to have that rocket. So I never, never had it. So I could just yeah, throw no, it around. How do you wear that out? I wouldn't, I, yeah. Uh, you have to get to know people. I mean, I think one of the biggest mistakes managers make now, especially, I'm, an, you know, Lee and I are both non league managers, but especially in League Two, I look at, I've told you this before, Jay, you know, my biggest mistake was the big turnover at the, year, at the end of year one. I don't know why people have this big turnover. Because you never get anywhere with anyone. You kind of build in this rapport, in this relationship. You're getting to know everything you need to know about the human being behind it. You're starting to develop the trends and styles that you want him to be as a player for you. And at the end of the year, because he's you know, seven out of ten, yeah. you kind of go, no, I, I think I can get better out there. You can't. No. Well, I think the thing is there, Dale, as well, you just touched on it there. After, listen, you can be the best coach in the world. You can do all the best coaching sessions. Yeah. I think a lot of it's about getting to know people and people's Absolutely. personalities and becoming yeah. friends with them. And, you know, it, a lot of it's about relationships now. You look at it and, as I say, you can put the best, you can be the best coach in the world. You've got nothing about you or you don't want to get to know no, people. absolutely, mate. People won't respond to you. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> no, absolutely. And you've, got to, and you've got to give yourself, you've got to give yourself a chance to be creative with how you do it as well, Jay. I really believe that you, because... You have got to be a, a, a man of many masks. You have got to be, um, you know, very honest. But you've also got to tell lies. If, if you're going to be honest with people all day, every day, I'm telling you, it's a pretty negative world to, to, to kind of commit to. Because you, you never know whether you're going to say something nice or something bad. But, hey, no, at least I'm honest. No, I don't, I don't see life like that anymore. I, 
I prefer to um, I prefer to focus on good. I prefer to focus on the positive parts of people um, rather than you know coaching. If you look at coaching at its truest form, it is a criticism of something that's just happened and trying to create a solution to that critique. So yeah. coaching in its bare bare essential basic foundation is no that's wrong i'll show you how to do it right why does it have to be that way around exactly. i mean i think you again you just said it there i mean the amount of times this season i've probably told players that how well they've done when they've probably been not great at times but if you keep putting people down they're not going to respond to that are they they'll nah. go in their shell they won't want to nah. be there. Nah. you've got to you've got to manage people to the best and like you say <clears throat> all the time isn't going to help build their relationships yeah yeah no they're, uh, they're definitely definitely and uh and uh, but you know you'll know this as well lee you do you do need practice you you do need practice with dealing with them situations you, you know it's it, it's it's really really important you have practice and you've got your dad that you will always call and want advice off um and and you know i, I was you know i was always very lucky because i had some some very experienced footballing people in my managerial career that could steer me into a maybe a different direction than what I was going at that time. Yes, of course, of course, mate. Super. So, so moving along, we you, you then decide to go out and get your coaching badge. Is that how was that? Was it was it a difficult part of, part of your time get, getting those on board, or did you, did it come naturally to you? No, I, I found I found the very first part of it really really straightforward. Um, I I had the B I did level so you started at level two and you went into your B license after that and I had B I had my B license by the time I was seventeen, um, but it, it I, I used to follow Robbie O'Keefe everywhere when he when he used to tutor the courses. I reckon I'd taken thirty UEFA Bs before I t- took my UEFA B. I uh, um I did my level two with Robbie in about nineteen ninety eight at Hatfield University. Right. And he was just, uh, oh, like you said earlier on, an absolute dream. I've, I've never been coached by anybody like him ever. It was no, one, wonderful, you know, wonderful, wonderful coach. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was, uh, that, that was, he, he kind of, he was the pathfinder to me really in terms of how to coach um, and, the, and the, 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 the model of what I wanted to do. You know, my first, my first ambition as a coach was to be a coach educator. It wasn't to work with teams. I took the A license at 22 and they said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be a coach educator. And so I didn't even have that kind of um, uh, vision of I'm going to work with players, develop players, become a you know, coach first team players, become a manager. I never really had that until later on. I don't think people realise as well, Darren, taking that at 20, what was your 22 taking your A license? Yeah. That's some step. It's not easy at the end of the day. You know, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. And to go and do that at 22 and have to talk to older players. I mean, I know you've got a story for us there about, uh, I think Roy Keane was on your A-life, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. I can't believe you didn't laugh when you said that. <laughs> um, no, look, I, we had some really good people on the. I mean, we had Gary Rowett, who's now at Millwall, and an outstanding championship managerial career. Um, Gary was probably the best coach on it. You know, from my point of view, yeah. but Roy Roy Keane was. I'm a Man United fan, and Roy Keane was was the my hero for so many reasons. Yeah. Um, and um, and and he walks in on on day one, and the group below us had Southgate, Colin Cooper, uh, Claridge, Jeff Kenner, Martin Keogh, and wow. Scott, uh, Kit Mark Kinsella, if you remember him, midfield player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ian Wohm, the left footer, Nottingham Forest. Forest yeah. Oh my life, what a left foot. Um, <laughs> Steve Staunton was manager of Republic of Ireland. He was on it. Mark Beanie, goalie coach at Chelsea. Yeah, it was like a who's who. Um, and <clears throat> no, it was it was just a wonderful experience of um, um, of being around those people. And, and Roy King was. I mean, I, I did it with a you know a, a mutual friend of mine and. Um, Lee's in a uh, lad called Craig Ryderd. Yeah. And uh, we did it together. And, and I was lucky. It was a little group of non league players. It was me, Craig Ryderd, and a guy called Anthony Hudson, who is um, the very famous Chelsea Hudson son. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, and uh, Anthony's gone on to manage New Zealand and Colorado Rapids in the MLS. He's, he's, he's the under 20 national coach now in the USA. Um, and he's done very well. So, anyway, us three kind of 
were same age. Um, Anthony and I were both midfield players. Craig was a winger. And we, we did our own thing. So we, we trained all day, did all the classes. As soon as it gets shut, straight in the town and we went out every night, 12, <laughs> nights, in a, 12 nights in a row. It was, it was like, a, it was like a, a stag weekend, stag holiday for, from like the dreams are made of. Play football all day against your heroes and then go out at night. And, um, wow. And, and because we were our own little group, Roy naturally amalgamated uh, or gravitated, sorry, to us. And uh, because we left him alone, really, and uh, we had a we had a really wonderful time. And, and, and look, there is a good story. There, there is a good one. Uh, and he said to me at the time, you, "You'll be telling your mates this for years." And he has been dead right. So we're doing this session, and I'm playing in midfield against Roy Keane. There was another, and there was another midfield player who'd been a professional. Uh, it was a very good player. <clears throat> and so Anthony Hudson and Roy Keane are in midfield and I'm in midfield with this other lad who's now works for the FA and, and someone else is behind us. Anyway, Gary Rowett gets the ball at right back, which is his position as a pro. And Gary had a, like a cannon of a right foot. So the coach educator says, uh, right, when Gary gets it in here, Darren, as you're playing at the top of that midfield three, I want you to make that diagonal run in behind the, their left back. So Gary, we're going to draw him out and we're going to slide this ball over the top to Darren. And I'm thinking, okay, no problem. I'm, listen, I'm 22, I can run. <clears throat> so um, anyway, I run in the corner and I'm watching this ball come over my right shoulder and this ball is like dead straight. So I take my eyes off the ball and to the left, I see a lad um, from Tranmere whose name escapes me, but he was like the old fashioned of old fashioned centre halves. And he was running after me like, like, a mo like an absolute monster. And then I look over and then I'm still looking to me left and I can see Roy Keane coming behind my left shoulder. So I've got this big lump of a centre half coming after me, who I know is going to put the brakes on and like kind of go through the motions. He's not, he's not going to work. I've got Roy Keane coming. I've got no idea what's going to happen next. So anyway, this ball comes down the right hand side of me. So I take a touch on my right foot. So I've got the ball between my right foot and the touch line. And then I shift my right foot over the top of the ball to get it on my left foot. Roy comes flying in and I put it through his legs. <laughs> Right, so everyone does the normal thing with a nutmeg, starts cheering and hollering, and it's reeking as well. So they're going a little bit over the top. I feel about two p's worth, two pennies worth. I feel so small and <laughs> scared. It was <laughs> so I turned around. The session stopped. Everyone's banging the floor with laughter. They think this is hilarious, and all I'm thinking about is. Oh my God, he's going to hurt me now. <laughs> and so I turned around and I said, I said to him, Roy, no disrespect. I just had, it was just on. He went, no worries, son. You'll be telling your mates this for years. <laughs> and lo and behold, I mean, 22, I'm 37 now, 15 years. And I'm still telling the story, but he, he, was mag he was magnificent. Absolutely. He did iron me out about 50 times a day after that and, you know, and laughed every time every time he did it but <clears throat> he was he was fabulous absolutely fabulous can't speak highly enough of him that's no, brilliant. brilliant mate so you go obviously into Brentford and then into Rotherham is that right and then yeah yeah with Andy make, yeah with Andy make, Scott make your way into into Stevenage to become academy manager what was that like no it was good uh, uh, Andy had got the sack at Rotherham um uh, in February and I stayed around I did five games as like a caretaker assistant and that was good fun <clears throat> and um, and we thought we may have a chance of getting it as a pair. And um, and Steve Evans came in as manager. And, and at the time, I you know I, I didn't get on with Steve. I think he's a decent fella now. Now that I'm yeah. older, and we've, we've we've kind of been on the circuit together. But um, um, we didn't get on. I I pushed the cards to be paid up, and uh, Steve thought it'd be <laughs> in his best interest as well because I, I I could be as difficult as him, and. Um, and 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 then I I spoke to Phil and, and Phil said, look, why don't you come back? Jimmy Gilligan's leaving. Um, uh, uh, no, sorry, Paul Hilton's going to be leaving. Uh, yeah. I think he was f forcibly going to be leaving. Um, would you would you come in? Um, and and I said yes. And I'd been asked three or four times before that, but I didn't I didn't feel then that you know. It, it was really set up to really want to get young players in. So I kind of always sidestepped it. Um, yeah. But I came back and uh, I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. And, you know, we, made, we did some good things there, good things in the academy. 
I mean, I remember, I remember going in myself and, and getting a job there when you, when you took over, obviously yourself and, and Robbie and, and me and Cam had come in. And, and to be fair, Darren, I've got to say, you're the best coach I've ever seen by, by country mile. And, you know, I swear by the work you do. And it shocked me how much and how quickly you change the academy round. I mean, I, I think we remember <coughs> you talking to the coaches and saying, you know, the, the goal here is to try and find that million pound player. And, you know, you work tirelessly and, and, and you've had some good ones come through, haven't you? You know, Ben Wilmot. I mean, I think you found Ben Kennedy in Ireland. Uh, yeah. And even players like Arthur Ironton, Andronicus, Giorgio, and a couple <clears> of others. You've had some real good ones out of there, haven't you? No, it was, but we had a really, we, you know, people talk about cultures and creating cultures. It's a load of nonsense. We had a load of good people, Lee, like yourself. Steve Castle, do you remember him? Oh, brilliant I mean, mate. I mean yeah. so there was, I think the full timers were Cass, Robbie, myself, and Steve Payne. Steve yeah. was a really young coach at the time. Yeah. Um, and, and so he had, you know, I mean, Steve Castle was one of my heroes as a, as a young player. Uh, I, used to, I used to love him. And I mean, do you, you remember the amount of like staff nights we had out and, yeah. I remember Steve pulling that chair from underneath your bum and you fall into the, to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the floor and what, I absolutely, and then we all nearly got in a fight and, uh, yeah. it was, uh, and, and it was all, you know, we had a wonderful group of men and we did most of our work away from, away from the football club. It was when we would finish our sessions and have a drink afterwards and, and sit down and talk. We, that's how I've been like that at every club. I've always wanted to kind of... Um, ring fence the people I work with and you know the people who are working with me or under me and, yeah. and try and create this kind of we're not just here to work we, we can have a bit of fun with this yeah. and and I always felt uh, you know we got that right wherever wherever I've been including you know when we talk about Watford but um, I, I remember thinking I remember the first couple of I always used to use Luton I don't know if you remember this Lee but I always used to use Luton as the benchmark always yeah. And I remember the first round of games. I mean, I remember watching the 12. So this would have been Arthur's group. <clears throat> and I remember us getting beat like 12-1 or something yeah. like that. And then next year, we it'd be, I don't know, 3-0 to them. And then the following year, we'd be winning 5-6-0. Yeah. And, and slowly but surely, we became the best, the best kind of academy in the area. <clears throat> and we were pulling away from people in a, in a, in a very rapid fashion. Uh, and why we were doing that from like you know Arthur's group was kind of the first really good group that I that I stepped in with. Uh, sorry, became uh, when I came in as academy manager. But while that was happening, you know, I, I Phil would always said to me, the chairman, if you think there's a real top player, let's go and get him. I don't know where he's from. I said, okay, I want to go to I want to go to Ireland. I started it at Rotherham where I started going to Ireland. Yeah, and I went over to Ireland and. I remember watching and a guy called Desi Curry was the national coach. It's all changed now, but he was the national coach at the time. And I went the Porter down. <clears throat> I drove through, probably through the scariest streets I've ever drove through. <laughs> and, um, and I got to Porter down and there was this group of, you know, under 16 Irish lads and Kenners was playing in front of the back four, believe it or not, like a little scrabby, scraggy bag of bones, sort of looking like a mess, big curly mop, no muscle, nothing. But horrible, aggressive, good runner, good passer of the ball. Had courage, always wanted it, always wanted the ball. But I remember Desi calling me afterwards, Desi Curry, and he said, who do you want? I said, who can't I have? Yeah. And he went, what? I said, who can't I have? And he went, well, the right back's at Sheffield Wednesday, the centre-half's at Liverpool, centre-forward's at Ipswich, the left-back's going to Blackburn, the goalie's at Rangers. <clears throat> what about Law in midfield? Yeah, Law, he's going in at Man City. He's never going to play there. No, no, no. But he's going in at Man City. What about Kennedy? No, Kennedy's no Kennedy's um, um, not attached. He's been over at a couple of clubs. His uncle used to play for Watford, so he might be going over there. I said, I'll have him. When can he come over? Well, yeah. half term. He's and then Ben come over, and, and then all of a sudden it got rolling. And then then I had the under seventeens training at Bradbury, the first team training ground before it was actually finished. Um, I had them training there before they went to Slovakia with Stevie Robinson, who's now at Motherwell, and. Um, and and there was this little ginger thing in midfield, absolutely booting everything that moved. And this was in his own training session. I said, who's the ginger kid? <laughs> went, that's, that's Dale Gorman. I said, who's he play for? He went, no one. He's still in Ireland. On his way back, can he have three days with us? Yeah, of course he can. And I remember we put him into this trial game against Bournemouth at Bradbury again. 
and um, and and Dale was, you know, Dale's still one of the best youth team players I've I've worked with. I mean, he was he was sensational as a youth team player. So it, it, and it all unravelled from there, really. And then uh, before you knew it, it was like three years on. We'd had like twelve or fourteen lads over. Yeah. And sort of six of them had been proed. I mean, I'm, I'm, we we took our first um, our tour group over there around the fifteens to Ireland, and we played a team called St Francis. We ended yeah. up doing it five years in a row. Best team I've ever seen. They yeah, were class. absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. And their desire and willingness to come over here and play football. Because this is where their <laughs> livelihood could come from, you know, the Premier League. Yeah, no, it's just... great, and they've just got a desire about them. And, and again, it goes back to what we first started on. I, I kind of think that because they haven't got academy football over there, because absolutely they're not spoiled, because they have to run through brick walls, they do it. And you know, I mean, it's the best level of football I've seen. Where every time uh, we go, over, it's, it's it, free, they, just... they're, they're, they're they're like our generation, Lee. You know, they're yeah, like they our generation and. They yeah. probably those kids when they when they're thirty seven, <laughs> thirty eight, and Jay's age forty eight. <laughs> they uh, yeah, uh, they um, they, they'll be saying oh, when it hard getting in the car with dad after the game. They'll they'll be talking like we do. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> but they they are they are you know Kennedy was like that. I remember Kennedy's mum and dad uh, coming over before he started, and I said, listen, you've got to let me be dad now. I'll, I'll do my absolute best for your son, but you've got to let me be dad. His dad looks at me and he went, if he misbehaves, just give him a whack. <laughs> I tell you, I can, I'll never forget when uh, Mr. Kennedy was being a bit, a bit naughty around school. Uh, dad Sol came into school and sorted him out. And I'll never forget that. <laughs> never forget that. You'd see his head poking out from a door and could see you walking in. And uh, yeah, he knew he was in trouble. Yeah, but, it, but you know, that's where you develop bonds with people. You know, I still yeah. talk to Dale and I, you know, Ben. I still talk to a lot, and 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 they're they're a massive part of my life. You know, there's play, there's players, ex apprentices that I think there was about eight that came to my wedding when I got married. Um, you know, they're massive, huge parts of my life, and and they're good friends now. They've become very, very good friends. Yeah, it's brilliant. So, how, how did it then come about from from running the academy? To becoming the first team manager at Stevenage, how did that feel? Well, look, I, I, I always, I always said to myself, if I was going to have a go at it, you know, management anywhere, I wanted it to be Stevenage because I had a lot of respect for Phil. <clears throat> I still have a lot of respect. That sounds like I haven't now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've still got a lot of respect for Phil. But um, and um, and 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 look, we we played Everton in the Youth Cup one night, and we were oh, sensational. Yeah. And we took Everton to to extra time. We got beat two one right at the right at the death, and um, and uh, and and after that, Phil kind of laid out a pathway to say, <clears throat> I think I think you will eventually become our manager five six years down the line, um, and then uh, at the end of the year, Phil made the decision obviously to bring Teddy in, and he said, Would you meet Teddy if you two you know can. Are compatible can you um we maybe you become his first team coach so i met teddy and uh had three hours with him and uh he was a lovely man L- lovely lovely chap and obviously again like you're sitting in front of a a world a genuine world-class footballer mm-hmm. um so i did that obviously until he was until he was fired and then um and then i took the i took the reins as a as a caretaker and i think i but i think phil I don't know if you'd ever admit this. I think Phil wanted me to be the manager after that. I think he wanted it to happen because if you look at my record as caretaker, it was poop, absolute poop, rubbish, crap. So, you know, I think I won three and then lost six in a row, something like that. And then Glenn came in and we kind of steadied it a bit. And So I, I think he wanted it to work for me. And I found, I found those caretaker games, that first nine games, I found them probably the most stressful games in my life <clears throat> I think we were third from bottom if I remember rightly we eventually we got up to about sixth from bottom with yeah, the three yeah. wins and then after the six defeats I think we were third from bottom again and um, and, uh, and I, I, when I talk about sleepless nights I think for eight weeks however long it was I, 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 I swear to you, if I got one two hours sleep at night I'd be lying um, it was like a baptism of fire and because I knew everyone there, Jay, and yeah. because I knew it, I knew every person there. 
going down, being relegated, would be the end of so many of those lovely, lovely people. Yep. And I took that really personally. I mean, oh, I was a, I was a mess. I was an absolute mess. Um, and I had a lovely assistant in Terry Harris, who had worked with yep. John Steele for years, a lovely man who did his best to reassure and, you know, encourage and things like that. And we were doing a lot of good things, but I remember we, Charlie Lee got injured away at Carlisle when he was the absolute pivot to the whole system. <clears throat> and I tried to replace him with two or three different, you know, variations of it. And my God, none of them worked. And I ended up having to change shape. And, that, and that's when Glenn came in. Yeah. Do you think, obviously, highs and lows are, are very big in football, aren't they, Darren, as you know? And how, how do you cope with them before at the start of managing and, and to now? And, you know, I think... Oh, I, yeah. This I recall back when we got beat by Royston, uh, I think five early on in the season at Biggleswade. And to be, you rang me on the Wednesday and it, and it went a long, long way with me because people don't realise how personal at times you take it. And it's the one yeah. thing I've been better at it is, you know, we, we'll lose a game sometimes and the sleepless nights, it's, it's, just, yeah. it's crazy. But talking to you now, to <clears> when I talk to you, I think there's a, a massive change in the way you deal with certain uh, things. Oh, I, 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 but it's, it goes back to this adding layers of resilience. Every time you get that knock and you get back up and you carry on doing it or you believe in it or you change, whatever you do, as long as you keep going, that's how you develop resilience. So, mm. at the, I mean, I, 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 I really struggled at the start. I mean, my life, I used to think my life was going to be over. What was I going to do? I can't feed the kid. I, I used to be like a mess. Then you put on your face in front of your players, you put on your mask. Go again, come home, mess, lose, mess. Yeah. I mean, you know, every which way in you to ha try and handle a defeat, I've tried. None of them bloody work. Yeah. None of them. You just got to win. So, but over time, you do, you do develop it. And, and the one thing I said to, um, especially after, I mean, two, two big things really have happened. Obviously, the Watford thing happened. <clears throat> and that gave me a, 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 a thickness of skin that I definitely needed, one if I was going to carry on. Um, didn't welcome it at the time, as you can probably imagine. But the other, the other thing, Jay, and I've never said this to anyone, I've never said this to anyone, um, uh, you know, in a broadcasting uh, format, but towards the end of my time at Stevenage, my family took a hell of a lot of abuse. Um, personal messages to my family, especially my wife, from supporters of Stevenage. Uh, um, and, and that was really, really tough really tough because your natural instinct as a dad or a husband <clears throat> excuse me your natural instinct as a dad is to fight yeah so yeah. straight out, i want to fight well what's he said come then let's let's find out who he is and I said, you know that, that's your natural um chimp paradox instinct fight or flight so my natural one is to confront um but you develop a layer I don't know. I don't know how. You, I don't know. How, there's no way to explain it. You have to go through it. I mean, a good friend of mine's Lee Johnson, and uh, he was sent bullets in his third year as manager at Bristol at Bristol City. Bullets. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and I mean, a, and go, going back to something you said right right at the start of of the building about people saying stuff on a keyboard on a phone. I, I always remember when times were really tough, just before you did did leave. I thought to myself, I was watching things being written on Twitter, thinking, you wouldn't say that to his face. So what are you even playing at? And the amount of yeah, people that are willing no. to do it, it's like, no way. Yeah. The not. thing is now as well, it's, it's not, <clears throat> you want to win more than anyone. That's what people don't understand. It's like, no, you're no, really no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all happy. Yeah. And people don't realise it. You, you're desperate, yeah, no. you're desperate so, to be right. I think, I think uh, you know, the, 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 that, was, that was, and the other thing, the other thing, and I, I still, I, I still back myself and Phil and the club to this day on what we did. I was working towards a set of, uh, you know, key points in my contract that I wanted to make sure that we fulfilled. And one of them was selling a player. And I had this young player in there who was making loads of mistakes. I mean, he wasn't this fine refurbished um, um, athlete and footballer that he is now Ben. I mean we went to Knox yeah. County and John Stead gave him a walloping and you know he had to go through loads and you know I had to Terence Van Cooten had to make mistakes on my watch to learn Ben yeah. Wilmot Kennedy I had Luke Amos Ben Sheaf yeah. I mean I had basically an under 23 team that I, listen I picked and I believed but I believed them 
under this under the uh, structure of what we were trying to achieve at Stevenage. So I think at the time when I, when I was uh, told that I was going to be coming away from being manager, um, I think we were 15, possibly, probably 16. Yeah, and we've just, yeah. we just drawn two to away at Port Well. So, but at the end of that, at the end of that year, and I'm really listen. The facts are the facts. The year before that was one point, two points off the playoffs, and we did die a death last nine games, absolutely. But we played some of the best football that any of my teams have played in my twenty years. Um, and then the following year, we I think we made one point six with Wilmot and Godden going. Yeah. So, I still think the year two was a success. I really do because. You know, for Steve to bring in 1.6 million from a kid, a 17-year-old, out of our academy in League Two, and a lad who had come out of non-league at 26, that's not bad going. Yeah, that's, that, that's not bad going. So mm -hmm. there's a lot to be said for the recruitment, especially of Matthew. <clears throat> but you know, I take a I take a lot of pride in the fact that you know we were we were fundamental, fundamentally the the two's coaches mm -hmm. um, in their time with us. So. It was, um, you know, I, I still, I still see it as a success, even even if others, others don't. I don't, you know, it doesn't really, that doesn't really affect me now like it did. Oh, of course. So you you leave Stevenage, you go to Watford, yeah, which you think is probably going to be the next sort of stage of your life, and and it doesn't yeah. quite work out like that, mate. And obviously, yeah, yeah, you know, I remember texting you after all what had happened and, and what was what was said, and you know, it was probably your lowest point in football. Uh, and how was it? In life. How, how was it? In life. Not in football, life, in yeah. life. In oh. life. You're probably right, um, yeah. So, I mean, look, I, let, let, let's, let's take the nuts and bolts out of Watford. Watford was, so they just bought a player that I developed in, in a first-team environment for one point something million. Watford wanted me to do that with them, and I was brought in to work the under-18s and under-23s. We were restructuring the whole thing, or the, or the club was. <clears throat> and I had about 30 players to work with, with, with two teams, under-18s and under-23s. I was going to manage them both and have coaches under me that did you know, the running work, but I'd, I'd be at the games when I could and I'd spread myself evenly. Yeah. And, um, and, and this is going to shock you. It's the best eight months' work I've ever done, Watford. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best eight months. I mean... It was a it was a very very poor team before you know before I got there. Some of the new players and new intake obviously improved it, um, but they'd, they'd not been great. Youth cup runs were poor. Twenty threes performances were um, they were okay actually, but they they were quite an old under twenty three team. So they'd all been released, and we were just going to play with the eighteens and the twenty threes plus a few older ones here, there, and everywhere. Again, we wanted to sell players into the football league, which we did. Randell Williams, who's played really well this year for Exeter. We sold him to Exeter. We sold Dion Pereira to um, the MLS. Um, yeah. You know, we did all these things. And it was the best eight months' work. I mean, to take Watford, a Cat 2 team with the smallest Cat 2 budget, um, you know, not great in its infrastructure as an academy, I got them to the semi-final of the FA Youth Cup. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's, let's have... And, a buy, and I've always... And I've always stood by this. And, I, and if and I was going in again as an academy manager, which I probably won't, I probably won't. So, you know, it's, it's, I've been scarred by that now. But um, I create elite environments. I create environments where you've got to be an outstanding academic uh, student. And yeah. Jay, you know this from Mary. Yeah. So don't suffer fools when it comes to, to the academic stuff. You know, you, I'm a big believer in the student athlete concept with you know, in the States. So I believe that, you know, football is a bonus. Um, and, and I set really high targets and I, I set really high standards and the whole thing absolutely blew me out of the water. And I was, I still don't really know what I've done. <clears throat> um, and in the end of, you know, a, a two week investigation, I went in, said my piece. And we decided to go separate ways. And I, I, listen, I, I didn't want to go back after that time because I mean, where did that all start? Who did it come from? You know, what am I supposed to say? Sorry, am I supposed to? I, I didn't really know kind of the ground, but one thing I do know before I got there academically, I think their their pass rate was something like sixty two percent. This is all factual. This is all Premier League statistics. And by the time I was, uh, by the time I left, we was on for ninety eight percent passing in 
all with uh, were all within their kind, not expected grades, but the one above that, their potential grades if they worked hard. And I, yeah. I do it, every, I set really high standards and, and, and that's it. I make demands of people. I don't think there's anything wrong in it. I, I, and, and, you know, I, the, the, be- the, the best thing about the Watford thing, the one thing that kept me going throughout that two weeks, and remember I was in eight papers one morning, so, mm. you know, nationally, uh, I was all over the BBC and all, all, all over, everywhere. But the best thing that happened was the under-18s did a, um, like an online um, petition uh, to get me back in the club. Uh, and they were doing uh, T-shirts and they were doing celebrations, which meant that they called it Safe Sally. <coughs> and, this was a gr- and this was a group of under-18s, people like Ryan Cassidy, who's still there. I mean, were a really good player. But it was, it was a really good group. I mean, it was an average, they were, right, you know, there was just some very special individuals. But as a, as a whole, it was just a very strong team that we'd made. Um, and that's why we beat Leicester, Birmingham, um, Ipswich. I mean, we bat uh, Southampton. We crashed through them. Um, yeah. You know, and we, it, it was really enjoyable. Still, the best eight months work in terms of, you know, managing the players, managing the, the, the training program, managing their academic performance. You know, they. I mean, there, there's one lad. It's a lovely story. You, you, this will definitely sort of warm your heart, Jay. This one is a. I took a young lad called Imad, um, Imad uh, Sanko. And Imad had been released by South End. So automatically you think, well, Imad's not going to be good enough for Watford. <clears throat> and Imad had not been to school since he was 14. Right. right? He'd not been to school. He had real, real trouble. You know, he'd had a real indifferent background and past. And anyway, coming on trial, we changed his position. I loved him. Absolutely loved him. I thought he was like, you know, like Kennedy, lovable rogues. I've always been quite good with the, the, the you know, the tear weights. And um, and at the end of the year, we got the Premier League Apprentice of the Year. Really, he'd not been, wow. he'd not been to school. For, he'd not been to school for three years. Wow, that's brilliant. And he still wow. and and he, and he and he still calls me, and we still talk, and so, you know, he, I, I love I love stories like if I it, 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 that is the absolute best thing about coaching those types of things. It, whether he plays professionally or not, yeah. he, he knows he's always got a friend with me. So. I remember you had a, a, a relationship with another young player, Louis Yamfam. Yes, yeah, Lou, yeah. He was unbelievable with you. He, you, you were something else with him. Well, Lou, Lou and I ended up playing Lou at Watford. Um, he, he didn't have a club at the time. He didn't have anywhere to go. And I ended, I ended up saying, "Well, come in here. There's no money here, Lou. I can't put you in. A, you know, I can't contract you. And uh, but if you want to get fit, and I can give you all the facilities and." Yeah. You know, and, and, and his, his mum, who's a wonderful, wonderful uh, human being, she's a yeah. midwife at L&D, um, you know, we, we still speak all the time. And Louis, Louis had a couple of games for Bromley this year as a trialist, and he's trying to go back out for to play. And again, Louis will be a lifelong friend. Yeah. A life, it doesn't matter that he's 22 and I'm 37. He's a grown man now. He'll, he'll be a lifelong friend. He loves smashing kid. I mean... Jay, if you'd have seen him at Watford compared to obviously what we <laughs> what, what we knew him as, I mean, what a wonder, a wonderful man, a wonderful man. Does, does that, Darren? Does that put, when you when you, obviously that happened, you're in eight newspapers. Does that kind of say to you, like, I'm done with football now? We are. What am I going to go and do? Did it put you off? Did it did it make you want to just go? You know what? I've done this and I want to get out. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a it's a horrible feeling, mate. I mean. I won't wish it on anyone. Um, no. I won't wish it on anyone. And um, but like I said, the kids, the kids were really, they were brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant with me, and you know their parents were very good and things like that. They were really wonderful, really wonderful. So um, it were, you know, look, I've, I've, I'm twenty, nearly twenty years in now, and when you're twenty years into a trade, <laughs> there's not much else you can do after twenty years. Uh-huh. So. I spoke to uh, 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 I spoke I spoke to Yeovil in um, uh, after Darren Way was was uh, sacked <clears throat> about maybe going in. Um, I spoke to another League Two club between then and the end of the season about becoming a manager. Um, I went and met two clubs, but like, I was ready to go. This is this is this is what we do. This is this yeah. is our trade. This is the way we work. I felt very obviously, um, you know, I, I felt the way I did about. Um, that experience of Watford but I always hung on to 
it's the best eight months work I've done in, 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 in my career and the players thrived on and off the pitch. You know, like I said, more importantly, they were better students for the environment that we created and the elite standards we created. Being a, being a Premier League footballer doesn't mean you don't have to not turn up on time. It doesn't mean that you don't have to look smart. You know, I, we just set standards in the same way I set standards at all my clubs. Um, and, um, and, 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 and because they ad ad adhered, I was lucky, they adhered to those standards, they got the benefit of it. You know, the players got the benefit of it. They, they did fantastically well. And, um, you know, I'd, 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 like I said, I had a really positive eight months. And it was, just, it was just a shame it ended the way it did. It really did. So now you find yourself walking around beaches most of the day, chilling out and uh, doing a blinking good job at Yeovil. How is it down there? No, it's a, it's a, it's a really good club. I mean, it's a, it's a demanding club. The fan base is very demanding. Um, but I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I've enjoyed it because I look at it completely differently. And I said to Terry Skivert, and I said, look, whether I'm here a month or three years, which gives me contract length, um, we will enjoy it. We will enjoy it. And, uh, and, and, and this is the surprise bit, especially maybe to Lee, because Lee knows me more as a coach of players. Terry does minimum 50-50 in terms of the coaching. I much prefer the being the manager rather than the coach, um, which is... You know, which is pretty strange, really, probably to someone who's always known me as the the one who takes all the sessions and think wants to be. You know, I've been called a control freak many a times and things like that. But I'm more. I just Terry does a lot of the coaching. I'm able to work with players. I'm a, I'm able to affect change. And and the biggest thing uh, with any job when you're the manager or the line manager or the boss, the CEO, the owner, whatever you are, is is how you manage people. And people, you know, footballers are people that play football. They're not footballers that are people. No. It's, it's, you know, they are people first. So I, I, choose to, I choose that side of the game now over, you know, doing 95% of all the coaching sessions like I probably did at Steenage. And it's worked you, out all right this season for you? Uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been really enjoyable. Uh, it's really, really enjoyable. I like the people I work with. Terry Skiverton's outstanding. Uh, we've got goalkeeper coach, uh, Darren Betchett, who's, who's a, a very talented young man and will end up at the very, very top. Um, we don't have any analysis. We don't have um, any sports science. We have a physio, a kit man. Terry's the academy manager, but doubles up with me. Betty's the, the academy goalie coach, but doubles up with me. Um, and we do things as simply and as effectively as possible. And we've had some, we've had some, we've had some brilliant wins. And I've got to say, the fans are absolutely magnificent, you know, uh, and they make so much noise. And, and it's a big fan base there. You don't realise how big a, big a club and big the area is. Yes. Um, and, and how important the football club is to the area until you're in it. <clears throat> Look, when, when, we were, when we were out without a winning seven, like we were just after Christmas, I mean, there's an unpleasantness to it, like there always is. But look, that's the gig. If you don't like it, you got to you got to moonwalk yourself out and get you know get into something else. But I really enjoy it. I really I, I enjoy think it. That was a, the big change I see from you, Darren. I mean, you, you, I'm obviously manager at Hendon. We haven't got the luxury of sports science and and huddle and da 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 da, da like a lot of clubs have in in bigger leagues, but. I remember just speaking to you on that and you've just said it there, you know, you, you've really stripped it back and, you know, like even when you're coaching, I'd go back to when we was at Stevenage, you'd come into me session and go, hold on a minute, we're doing this now and, and literally take it apart and listen, I loved it because I learned so much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jay, that's the biggest load of crop of <laughs> I've ever <laughs> heard. I, I loved it. I loved it when the control freak used to come <laughs> in my session you, and tell everyone he was wrong and take I, over. I, what a load of... I, mean, <laughs> I, 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 I bet in, in your own way, you're still that... I think you have to be a control freak to be, to be a manager. I think you have to, but you have to... Yeah, I, I think... I'll I tell, I, I tell you what I do now, Lee. I'll save myself for Saturdays. Yeah, I, know yeah. sounds, I know that sounds mad, but I'd get to Saturday, I'd be exhausted. I used to watch, <laughs> I used to watch three games of the team we were playing 
eat it before every, every time we played them. So if we played Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, I'd watch three games leading up to the Saturday game, watch the Saturday game obviously live, four, watch it back, five, watch three of the team for Tuesday, I'm on eight already, watch Tuesday, nine, watch Tuesday's game back on Wednesday, ten, watch three games before we played Saturday, I'd watch 14 games in a week for nine months. <laughs> <laughs> like, how ridiculous is that? So, what I do is now I I cut through all of that mumbo jumbo because it definitely doesn't help you win games when it comes to a Saturday, um, and um, and I, I save myself and I pour every ounce of energy, even more so than when I was at Stevenage. I'm, I've always been quite lively, <laughs> but um, I uh, I'm 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 even you know I, I'm I'm full of energy when it comes to Saturday now. And the other thing is is it's a lovely feeling, Lee, isn't it? When, when the group of players that are going down the tunnel, uh, you, you know what's coming out from them every week. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely, warm feeling that you get, yeah. knowing that they share the same um, uh, feeling of what this is meant for and what, how much is meant by this game and what, uh, what the consequences and their responsibilities are for the performance of this game. When they um, buy I'm, it's, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. I'm very lucky. I've got a group of men, and they are yeah. men, big men, yeah. this lot. Yeah. Um, and they are, uh, when they go down the tunnel, I know they're going to fight, kick, scrap. And if anyone in true sort of my type of character fashion uh, wants to go toe to toe, the worst case is we're, we're pretty good at that bit. So, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's been very enjoyable. I enjoy Saturdays a lot more. Like I said, I'm a lot more fresh and. I have a bit of fun. I turn around to take the mick out of the crowd, and I just kind of do. I, I, I'm behaving more like I would behave because I don't think I have to be a certain way, yeah, like yeah. I think you do when you're in your first job. Yeah, and cool. um, and because of that, I find it a lot more. You know, I'm, I'm myself. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm myself. There's no there's no trick about it. It's just it's just me, me, me. So, um, you know, I've I've really enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm very thankful to Yeovil for. <clears throat> giving me the opportunity to to kind of be 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 back in. Well, sure. Um, obviously, we've got this awful pandemic. What's going on at the moment, mate? And you know, I, I'm sure football in, in everyone else household has taken a step back. And you know, we just have to wait and see the outcomes. But what's your feelings on the outcome? What do you think will happen? What do you want to happen yourself? Um. Well. We all know that there's a, there's a, the biggest element to this is the, the survival of humanity and people. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I just think when it comes to football, I actually echo what my chairman said, and he's been he's been very forthright in his opinion, and and, and I, I agree with it. It it doesn't matter when a season finishes, but the yeah. seasons have to finish. Hendon's season should be finishing. Yeah. The overall season should be finishing. It, 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 <laughs> it's just, what, what are you going to do? Spend, I don't know, let's, for argument's sake, spend £100 on eight months to be told that £100 you spent on all of that, that, was worth, that, wasn't, that wasn't worth anything because we're not yeah. going to count anything you've done. Oh, come on. I mean, it it's not rocket science. Wait till everyone's healthy and um, finish the season properly with fans. With fans. It doesn't have to be uh, you know, football behind closed doors isn't football. Mm. It's tra that's that's called training, um, and um, and 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 start the next season when you've got to start the next season and make the provision for next season when next season comes. But you, you know, it's, it. you've got to finish it. You can't have people put what they put on the <clears> line <throat> here and teams no. top of the league and fighting for promotions at any level. It doesn't matter. No. Our league no. have been top of the season have been punished because they've got ten games to go and the, and the season's void. You know, teams no, absolutely. staying up who haven't been have been bottom all season. You know, yeah, not, it's not right for me. It's no, a, no, it's no, no. Uh, and you know, I, I, I think I think it's really important. To, I, I just you got to finish seasons. I mean, it's just I can't. There's no other way of there's no other way of dealing with it. And pe people are saying, well, what about players' contracts? Well, you know, if you if you've got forty week contracts, which I know is you know largely our our kind of world, Lee is. Um, you're not going to be paying them for not playing now, are you? No. And if no. you are committed to them, you're going to be making the most of the furlough scheme. Of course. 
right? Yeah. So it, it, that so that that outgoing's taken away, and and you might have to start it up again. But I I, I can't see any other way than to than to start again. I don't think it will. I really don't think it will, because I I don't think the people that are running the show, um, at whatever level, <clears throat> see see it see life like we see it. You know, I, but um, I, I totally agree with you. So I think it will be, uh, I, I, I don't know what I think it will be, but I know what I think, and I think it should be, um, I think they should cancel all the seasons and promote Yeovil. <laughs> <laughs> at Wembley, though. At Wembley first, you just walk out there. Yeah, uh, just at Wembley, we'll take, I mean, if we went, uh, we'd take 25,000. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big club, big club, but oh, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to bring Yeovil to the Lamex. Um, you know, it'd be my uh, my two clubs. Um, that would be that would be good, Jay, wouldn't it? I'd get called a few names there, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I, I'd look after you, mate. I'd look after you, Dana. Um, yeah, fine. Yeah. It'd be fine. Um, my um, uh, my hair will be the same length, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> long long hair and a big ginger beard. <laughs> well, look, we've we've bought we've bought it right up to date now. Let's uh before before we finish up, do you mind us trying to find out a bit more about the real Darren Soul? Yeah, go, go. Right, let, <clears throat> myself and Lee are going to ask a couple of quick fire questions. I'll go first. Um, where's Darren Soul going to be in five years' time? Uh, employed. <laughs> 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 no lowest one say unemployed. Lowest and highest moments in football? Uh, losing at Kenilworth, uh, 7-1, I think. Yeah. yeah to Luton, lowest. Um, highest moment would be what would be my highest moment I know you said this is quick fire but I don't really know um, I've, got, I've got to say I've had I've had yeah, not making more, no 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 I can't say that can't, he'll find me um, <laughs> he, uh, we, we've had we've had two I've had two games as managers uh, two different clubs Stevens and Yeovil at Barnet and and the support that have gone to Barney from both clubs, for some reason, stays in my memory for a, for a long, long time. So I would say the support away at Barney was a big moment. The, uh, one, of me, one of my first ambitions was to be a football league manager and have my dad, my granddad and my brother in the stand. And I, and I managed to do that. That's probably my highest one. It's probably my best one. What's Darren Soul like after a win? And what's Darren Soul like after a loss? Um, I'm a disgrace after a loss. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a disgrace, right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bad, per, a bad human being. Um, I don't talk. Um, I've normally had some sort of tantrum. Um, after a win, I'm the best human being in the world. You can get anything out of me after a win, <laughs> and and the players know it. So they, they uh, no, I'm, a win. Uh, in manager terms, winning means you switch off. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, losing means you switch on, and you don't switch off. Yeah, oh, got you. Yeah, I like that. Best three players you've worked with? Um, ben Wilmot. Yeah. Uh, do you include including at Watford? Yeah. Uh, you can put Watford players in. Yeah. Oh, Tom Cleverley was good. Was he? Yeah, he was good. Daryl Yamat was good. F forget Wilmot, he, he ain't even in this frame. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to fit me in, isn't you? We've played together. Sorry? You're trying to fit me in because we've obviously yeah, played nah, together. No, nah, no, nah, definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they were, they were, oh, wow. I mean, the level is frightening Premier League. Um, yeah, probably in Wilmot. Probably, the, probably the, those three could just, wow. Well, Unbelievable. Biggest regret about releasing or not signing a player? Charlie Lee. Oh. <laughs> well, hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to be one word answers here. <laughs> what? Yeah, <he's> right. <laughs> right. Go why? Did you say, did you say why? Why, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, 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 you know, if, that, that year too, I didn't have enough character around me 
Um, and the way I play as well, I think Charlie fits the way I play. Um, and I'm hoping he's going to be with us at Yeovil next year as well. So um, he, he just seems to make it happen. And he's a very good endorsement of, of how I like playing. Um, but the biggest thing is when we were going through tough times, I could poke Charlie right in the chest with my index finger and he would respond. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we're back to resilience, aren't we? And, and uh, he's a pain in the ass. He's one of the most difficult people I work with um, or have worked with and do work with. He's a pain in the ass. A pain in the ass, like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> nothing's ever right. Nothing's ever his way. Nothing's ever decision goes well or should be like that. He's just, um, but he's come Saturday. Very good. Very good. Favourite manager you work with? Uh, Javi Gracia at Watford. Yeah, we nice. were very, we were we were very close, but Andy Scott for what he did for for me and the the lessons I learned from him. Yeah. Who do you look up to in football? Well, that currently works. Yeah, in football. Well, look, Glenn. Glenn, I'll always. I know he's not working in football, but Glenn Roder is someone I'll always look up to. Um, I love Pochettino. I think he's one of a kind. I really do. Um, what he does with what he's given and what he chooses to use at his disposal is just breathtaking. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I would definitely say him. But you know, anyone who's had longevity as well, you know, these these lads, I, I think Neil Harris does wonderful. Lee Johnson, I look up to. I think he's done a wonderful job. Um you know, people like that. I mean, there's so many. There's so much good work out there by English managers and coaches. Chrissy Wilder, you know, was was at Northampton when when, when he brought his. He's just a, a top man, you know, first and foremost. So there are some, there are some very very good people. Uh, yeah, very good people. But I'd say Glenn, I look up to more than, more than anyone. Okay. If you wasn't a manager, what would you be? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I want Lee to answer this because he told me yesterday, Darren. I thought you'd say a dustman. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, what would I be? I've I no idea. Um, I'm a good player. No, uh, uh, what now? If I come out of football now, um, just in, just whatever. I've no idea. I was a postman. I had, a, I, had a, I had 18 months as a postman when I was 20 to pay could for have my. Been <clears throat> could have been an actor, but I chose to play for silly itching. Um, <laughs> Could have been, yeah, could have been. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There's definitely a thespian inside me. I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely <laughs> just got to pull them out, yeah. <laughs> no idea on that. No idea. You've, you've caught me there. Caught me there. <clears throat> okay. Describe Darren Sile in three words. This is going to be, this is going to be interesting. Um, angry. <laughs> 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 um, Aggressive, <laughs> yeah, not painting myself in a good light. You're doing well, man. Um, I know. Angry, aggressive, honest. Very good. Last question from me: Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Always choose a good big one over a good little one. I got one last question, but we hadn't even planned to say it. I had to ask you one question, Darren. Would you ever consider coming back to Stevenage? Absolutely. Of course, yeah. You can't. There's no. There's, there's. There's not enough jobs in football for, for, for anyone to ever say that they would never work somewhere. I mean, it's, it's just simple maths, isn't it? And and, and look, see, you know, it's where I grew up and stuff like that. Yeah. But I've got to say, I'm a, I'm having good fun at Oval. Ah, oh, good. Now, listen, mate. Absolute pleasure to come on for our first. Uh, Episode. We fit in an hour's worth of talking into four and a half days. Honestly, mate, well done. <laughs> uh, you've been different class, mate. And, and as I say, from my point of view, and I, I know Jay speaks the same, you know, I've been very, very fortunate to watch your work, mate. And, and you, you're doing no, thank you, what you do and, yeah. um, and the way you've got time, people, mate, goes a long way. So thank you for coming on, mate. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Jay, you got anything, mate? No, I fully agree with everything you've just said, Lee. Uh, superb. Cheers for that, Darren. No, my pleasure. Any time, gentlemen. Good Stay enough. safe and very, very well. Top man, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers, lads. Good, mate. See you soon.